How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about buying an electric scooter and when is it actually worth it to actually own one yourself? You could have various transportation situations. For example, you could be owning a car and you could be trying to supplement it with an electric scooter. Yet another situation is perhaps you live in the city and sometimes you rent a Lime or a Bird scooter and instead of doing that, you're thinking about buying an electric scooter to replace that rental cost. Today I'm going to talk about the break even point of buying an electric scooter. Now this is going to be different for everybody, but I'm going to go through a few examples just to have a somewhat of a ballpark idea of how long does it take before you can make back this large amount of money because sometimes these scooters are pretty costly. Today's video is sponsored by EcoRico. They provided me the electric scooter at which I can test all these theories on. It costs $1,100, another $100 worth of taxes. I drove it as long as I could until it ran out of electricity. So this would be a typical usage scenario. I got 22 miles out of it. And this means you can go about 11 miles before you have to start turning back. Otherwise, you might have to push the scooter a little bit. It went reasonably fast at 22 to 25 mile an hour. Now this would be, you know, a little bit faster than typical electric scooters. Now I have to say scootering is not without danger because it's similar to riding a road bike at 25 mile an hour. And when you're going that fast, you know, there are dangers related to it when you are right in the bicycle lane in the traffic. To me, there are several benefits, including you do not have to buy insurance, but there are also drawbacks because when you're in a car, you're essentially wrapped around in a metal cage. Whereas if you're in a scooter, there's nothing wrapped around you, but at least you can sort of, you know, dive out of the way if you see something coming. Okay, so for this scenario, I'm really thinking about if I don't drive my Porsche Boxster, instead I ride the scooter, which I have been doing. If it's just a couple of miles, I find that the time cost of riding a scooter is you know sort of equivalent and at the same time I can kind of have a nice view because if you ever ride a scooter it's a lot different than when you're in a car because in a car you're all covered up and you do not see everything whereas when you're in a scooter electric scooter gas power scooter all of these allows you to see kind of like a panoramic view so to me, it's a little bit enjoyable because you know you get the wind and everything. You're just kind of like out in the open. So here's a rough spreadsheet I made on the cost breakdown of driving a car. In particular, my particular car, which is a Porsche Boxster 2001. And I'm gonna add in some interesting numbers for you guys because some of you have asked me, how much does it cost me in terms of maintenance or all this stuff on my Porsche Boxster? So now you're gonna get a little glimpse of that. Gasoline costs about $4 per gallon right now and my car, Within the city, I've noticed it only gets 24 miles per gallon versus if I'm driving to LA or something, I get 28 miles per gallon because I'm going a lot faster. I'm not slowing down and speeding up. So um, in the city, I only get 24 miles per gallon roughly. So this equates to about 17 cents a mile. You know, on IRS deduction for miles, you can actually deduct 54.5 cents per mile. This is a lot more than the gasoline cost because they factor in uh, maintenance, insurance, tires, and things like that. So today I'm gonna add in some of these things, not all of them, because if you have the car still, you cannot necessarily you know, reduce your insurance unless you change the mileage on it. Sometimes there's a minimum to the amount of maintenance that you have to do. You do not always do maintenance every 15,000 miles. If you just let the car sit for a whole year, you still sometimes have to change the oil. So anyway, my oil and filter change cost me about $70. The frequency is about every 15,000 miles. Cost per mile, it's about half a penny. Okay. Add a little bit more to the total cost. You'll notice that I didn't add in the engine belt, which sometimes I have to replace the cabin air filter, the car air filter. And so those things add a few pennies. Tires cost me about a thousand dollars and I get a life of about 30,000 miles. And I have seen the records of, you know, my tires, they last about that long. So the cost per mile for my tires is actually 3.3 cents. And then you have maintenance which is really about um, changing the big things, the things that you have to bring the car into the shop. I remember I had a few instances. One time um, I had white smoke coming out and that cost me maybe $2,000. One time my coolant hose broke and that cost me $1,000. One time my coolant tank broke down, cost me another $1,000. One time my alternator broke, that cost me about $1,400, $1,700 or something. So just those things alone, it's about five, dollars $6,000 over the course of the car life, which has been about 10 years. So I add all those things where I brought it into the car shop and I'm estimating about $10,000. 
And during that time, I drove um, 240,000 miles roughly. So that equates to be about uh, 4.17 cents uh, every single mile in terms of maintenance. The car depreciation, I bought it for $20,000. Right now it's worth about $6,000. So $14,000 of depreciation. And for those of you that bought a new car will know that this is extremely low uh, considering that I drove it for like 10 years or something. So 240,000 miles, the depreciation per mile is 5.83 cents. Now, do I consider subtracting the insurance from this in terms of per mile? No, because I feel like my insurance is gonna stay at roughly the same cost, even if I you know, ride this e-scooter around. The only instance where I might reduce the insurance cost is if somehow I reduce it by, let's say a thousand miles every single year and I entered this into my insurance and they also lowered it. But I'm gonna ignore this for now. The car itself, you have to drive around whenever there's parking fees and stuff. So, you know, you might wanna consider that. For the area I live in, generally there's no parking fee. So, you know, plenty of free parking everywhere. So if you add all these things up, this is gonna be different for everybody. So you might want to uh, go download my spreadsheet. I'm gonna link it down in the video description below and do these calculations for yourself based on your own car. Um, so the cost per mile to drive for me personally is 30.4 cents. This is extremely low compared to probably average. You might even want to just use the average of 54.5 you know, cents, the IRS average. The cost of the scooter is actually $1,100. Now, some of you might say, wow, this is kind of expensive compared to you know, the other scooters that you can get. Well, this is more expensive because it can go up to 25 mile an hour versus, you know, some other ones which are slower. So these things do change their price and how much capacity it does and how fast it can go. So uh, based on these capacities, it is a $1,100 scooter plus another $100 for tax. If you divide 1,200 by 30 cents, I essentially have to ride this thing for 3,939 miles. My typical round trip length for every single trip I took, you know, so far I did maybe five, six trips or something and it's been averaging about 10 to 20 miles every single trip I take. So, you know, this is gonna take me about 394 trips. So roughly every single day riding it, you know, to do something for an entire year. So this personally gives me a good ballpark of, you know, how long I have to use this thing before I can recoup the cost because, you know, $1,200 is a lot of money and I want to get this back as soon as possible. And this will essentially be in terms of me not having to put as much money into my maintenance costs. And also I would directly see it by not buying as much gasoline. One-handed scooter is not a good idea. This gets pretty unstable. I don't want to go faster than this with only one hand. Right now it says 10 mile an hour. So let me jump right over to the scooter charging cost because this might be on some people's mind. How much does it cost to charge the darn thing? Is it just a penny to charge it one time or is it like a dollar, right? It consumes about 110 watts. Uh, right when I start charging it and if you know about battery technology, it sort of tapers off later on four or five hours to charge or so the battery capacity is 11 amp hours The battery voltage is 48 volts You actually have to multiply these two in order to get the watt hour. This is a measurement of Energy, so it's about 528 watt hour I get about 24 cents per kilowatt hour over here. So if you multiply those two well if the battery is completely drained and I need to charge this all the way back up, it's gonna cost me 11.6 cents. Now this is not that much, right? This is in addition to the cost of the scooter itself already. So you don't go, oh, I only paid 12 cents to get there. Well, electricity costs, yes, it only costs you 12 cents, but you know, you still have to pay for the scooter itself. So if some point in the future, you already made back your money in terms of cost savings, then you can go, oh yeah, you know, I only have to pay another 12 cents. So then you would start saving money. So this thing to buy or not really depends on if you're gonna use it long enough. Miles for a full capacity charge, which I personally measured at 22 miles. So keep in mind that I did go over four or five overpasses. So this will reduce the range because it takes a lot more electricity to go up hill 
versus if you're just always on flat ground. 0.528 cents for every single mile I travel in terms of electricity costs. Now you might ask, how long will this scooter last? Generally, if you discharge it all the way and then charge it back up, you can do this about 500 times before the capacity reduces by about 20%. So before you charge and discharge it 500 times, you're likely gonna make back the amount of the scooter itself already. Now 500 times of charge discharge cycles is actually a very aggressive thing to do. Generally, if you know about the battery technology, it's not very good to discharge it all the way. Generally, if you do not discharge it all the way and if you just drain it, you know, 20%, you know, as soon as you come back home, you know, you only use 30% capacity or 50%, you plug it back in, then the battery is going to last a lot longer. This doesn't mean it'll last longer in terms of, oh, you can charge it 500 times because if you charge it from 50% capacity, of course, you're charging it less, right? So it means that if you charge it before it's fully drained, you can charge it more full cycles, maybe a thousand or 2000 full cycles, you know, in aggregate. Now, when you buy a scooter, you also have to think about the security of it and also uh, requiring to haul it somewhere. When you rent a scooter, you just have an app because those things are littered all over the city everywhere. You just use an app and then you unlock it. You did not have to bring that scooter to wherever you started riding that thing. And wherever you end up, you can just kind of go blah, you know, just leave it on the street or somewhere. You don't have to, you know, lock it or anything because they have these locking mechanism that's inside the scooter. But when you buy your own scooter, you have to lock it up somehow. You have to buy a lock and you also have to worry about it getting stolen because once it's stolen, within the first year of you trying to use it so that you can recoup the cost, if someone happens to steal it, then you're gonna be out, you know, $1,000 or something. So security is a concern. So this might work a lot better if let's say you are commuting to work or something and you are able to somehow also ride this all the way inside your cubicle and, and then you can store your electric scooter somewhere inside so that you know people can't take your scooter. With that said, I generally ride mine in the daytime, just kind of wrap it with chains around a pole or something. It tends to work out pretty well. Now let's talk about scooter rental costs. They have those things called Lime, Bird. Generally, those things, when you start the scooter, it costs $1 no matter what you do. So the longer that you ride it for, the cheaper it's gonna get per mile, but then they don't charge per mile, they charge you per minute. So you have to go, okay, once you get on those things, don't just lounge around. Once you start it, you can't just have a chat with your neighbor, you know, that's getting a coffee or something. Once you start the app, you better like haul and go as fast as possible to wherever you need to go. When there's a traffic light, you're actually wasting 15 cents every single minute. So it costs 15 cents a minute. Let's say you ride it on average 15 minutes, then the total cost per ride might be about 325. Average mile per hour in my scooter is actually about 12 miles an hour, even though you know my peak is 25 mile an hour, but you do have to come to a stop. So I'm gonna go, okay, about 12, miles an hour. If you ride it for uh, one hour, they charge you $10. So it's about 83 cents every single mile. If you ride it for just 15 minutes, the cost increased to about a dollar and eight. So now you know the ballpark of cost per mile, roughly 80 cents to a dollar or so. But cost per ride is still about 325. So you divide this from $1,200 you have to ride it about 369 times. Now this is each way. Each way is $3.25. So if you think about it in terms of round trip, you gotta make 185 round trips of these, you know, relatively short trips uh, before it would be more worth it to buy an electric scooter. Now 185 round trips, you know, this might take you about half a year or one year of riding every other day before you can hit this amount. Now, personally, I already put about 100 miles on it. So at 30 cents a mile, I already did not have to spend $30 in terms of maintenance costs on my car and also gasoline. Now I would say riding a scooter is a little bit more freer than taking a car everywhere with you. Because when I'm driving my car everywhere, I don't just drive it leisurely to wherever. I think about where I wanna go and I try to time it so that, okay, I'm doing purposeful things wherever I'm going. I don't just kind of go, oh, look at that. Oh, I'm just gonna ride around there and just kind of cruise around slowly. This is exactly what I do on the scooter because I go, okay, I'm, you know, electricity is not gonna cost me that much. I might as well, you know, just ride it some more to get my money's worth. So. Um, in an electric scooter, it's like a different form of transportation where 
you know, you might not be able to get to certain places with a car. I can like just kind of go in very narrow roads. Sometimes I can like go on the sidewalk a little bit, you know, just kind of go through places, just kind of explore. So because of all this, with the scooter, I kind of explored more different places and I was able to do all of this more leisurely. I'm able to stop whenever I want because stopping in a car, you actually have to turn off the engine, get out of the car and go look at something, right? But for a scooter, I can just go, stop and then i just you know i'm there already so thanks for watching this video on how much an electric scooter costs and your break even point if you guys are interested i do have a referral down in the video description below there's a coupon code you can get it for a certain percentage off i'll leave it down over there don't forget to give me a like comment down below let me know if you're considering getting a scooter and as always don't forget to click that subscribe button and ring that bell icon thanks for watching lock it up this scooter does have this little hole over here. Okay. I have sushi in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're all at Whole Foods over here at the gathering. Hey, these people actually, well, decided to buy some food here. <laughs> because, of, because, because on the comment section, people were like, I'm not coming. Because, oh no, I, 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 $10 it's, not, it's not frugal, frugal enough. So, thank you for coming, everybody. Say hello. Say hello. You're all, you're all gonna be, you're all gonna be um, on, on the video. And, and the guys back there, huh? say hello.